I thought I'd start this episode off with saying thank you to my grandpa. He bought me a tractor. Well, technically he bought this tractor a couple years ago. And since I'm taking over the cattle operation of the farm, he felt like I should have my own tractor. Because that little Kubota you see in a lot of videos that I feed with and use quite often is actually his tractor. So he gave me this old thing. It's a, I think it's a 1975 Case 1370. Uh, I'm not 100, I'm not 100% sure on the year, but uh, it's got a few issues. I brought it up here by the shop to work on a couple things because it has developed a bad oil leak back here. And if that's bad enough, I got to get a pan down. Eek. Um, but for the most part, it's in really good shape. Well, good morning, YouTube. Or whatever time of day it is when you happen to be watching this. I finally found the oil leak on this tractor. Originally, I wasn't going to film the fixing of this oil leak, as I said here in this clip. Like I said, fix that oil leak under there, but I won't probably put that in a video. I had somebody say they actually would like to see me fix it, and I thought, why not? Somebody else might get a kick out of it, too. You never know. I gotta warn you up front, I really didn't show a lot of my work, because it was just impossible to get the camera at any angle to show you what I was doing. So basically I explained what I did and showed you what I did after the fact. Um, and also I did a lot of handheld camera work in this, so you probably want to take your seasick pills. So I gave the tractor a bath with the pressure washer for a couple hours yesterday, no exaggeration. Tons of stuff came off of it, holy cow. Um, she's actually orange. Looks pretty good now. There's still a few spots I couldn't get the grease off of and uh, have to hit it again, but uh, especially under these quick couplers, that pillar is really oily. Just like back in here too, I just could not get it off of there. So keep trying. But anyway, point being, I thought my oil leak on this thing. Ooh, it's a little chilly this morning, and I'm kind of shivering. It was uh, under here. And there is a little bit of a leak right there. I think it's coming from there, but not very bad at all. But after washing it and using it yesterday, um, I discovered where the leak was coming from. And hopefully you can see this, but you see this um, rubber line right there, rubber and steel, way up in there. That line is actually what's leaking. It was just pouring out. You can see we're running down the side of the transmission here. And it runs down, runs down, pools up here, and then drips off. So yeah, it's actually coming from way up on top of the transmission. There's not enough room in here to do this proper. Oh, now it's out of focus. Focusing on the wrong thing, camera. Back in there. Um, I know that's terrible, but that line goes into that little uh, block, whatever you want to call it, right there. That is the line that's leaking. Um... As you can see, oil just runs out of that thing. That's the same line. So I looked through the parts book. I literally ended up going through every single page because I could not figure out what line that was. And I finally realized it's the differential lock. It's this guy right here. Goes back and goes back to the transmission. That is it. So why I lose so much oil out of that line, I don't know, because one would think that that would be the pressure line to the differential lock, and it would only have pressure when the differential is locked. 
And boy, the floor of this tractor is just disgusting. That's actually carpet. And it's just nothing but dirt. Ugh. So I'm, let's see here. I don't even know how to word this. Um, this little silver button right here, uh, that is the differential lock. It's supposed to have a little cap on it that you can press on you know, with your foot. So I'm going to see if I can take this carpet back and if maybe there's an access plate here that I can disconnect the line up here. I hope so because I can't reach up under there and get that thing loose. Well, guess what? No access hatch. Put a little bit of a uh, liquid wrench around that thing because it had a lot of dirt around it. It was really hard to move. So there is just absolutely no way I can reach my hand up in there and get to that line. Let's see here. Give you the light. I mean, if it's it's behind that post right there, um, it's up in that little hole. I can't even think about getting my hand in there at all. It's just not going to happen. I don't know if you can raise this tractor cab or not. Um, I'm not even sure I want to try. Probably could. I think I could take the mounts out because there's the front mount right there and jack it up. Might be able to get to it that way. I don't know. I pulled the carpet out, vacuumed it off the floor. Man, this floor is rusted. I don't think I'm putting that carpet back in. That's just disgusting stuff. Uh, so what I'm thinking about doing is sanding this down and putting on some bed liner or something. I don't know. That'll be way off in the future. Uh, but I was looking at how this was built, and I realized this plate is not part of this plate. As you can see, there's silicone on it. Somebody tried to seal it. You know, it's uh, completely different, completely separate. And then I got to looking at it some more, and I realized that on these older tractors, which I've completely forgotten about, the cab sits over the engine mount. Like this part here is part of the hood for the engine. That all just comes through the cab. This is completely separate from the cab. So you can see by this rubber ring here that it sit. I cannot talk today. You can see by this rubber ring here that it sits on here and it's supposed to seal around this hood. These tractors were still available without a cab when they came out. So like this platform, here and all of this is part of the engine i guess is the way you could describe it that's kind of oversimplified so lifting up the cab is not going to lift up this plate so i don't know how the fork i'm going to get in there so after looking this over a lot more i am definitely cutting a hole in this piece over here by the uh, differential lock um, this plate does bolt down to the floor. There's little access points and there's bolts down in those things. But in order to get that out of there, I literally have to take this entire dash apart, it looks like. Pull all this out. There's bolts up here. Ah, oh, it just looks, it looks, uh, very, very intensive, I guess is the word. I took... Just a regular hand grinder, cut off wheel on it. Uh, and after making some scribe lines of where I want the hole, I followed those. And I'm not quite all the way through on these corners. So I'm gonna come back with the Dremel and try to get these corners. The reason I'm not going uh, all the way to the corners with the hand grinders, I don't want that wheel that deep down in there. Uh, because I don't know if there's a hydraulic line or something under this plate really close to it. So I'm trying not to go very deep at all. And I have this uh, scrap piece of metal here that I will put over it. And I'm going to use these two bolts here to help hold this plate down. And then I think I can put a couple bolts like here and here. And I'll basically match that on this side to hold it down over here. So that's my plan. The bottom line goes forward. So it's this top line right here that I want. Okay, that's easy enough to reach. 
That was worth cutting a hole in the floor for. And there's the hydraulic hose I had made up. Um, he had this 90, so I can do that. No problem, the back of the tractor. Uh, and this, though, I wanted him to uh, put this 45 part on, and he did not have one, so I went straight. See what I'm talking about? Um, I don't care about this bend here, because the hose will, you know, bend around. But I wanted to come down out of that cavity, for lack of a better word. So I'm hoping I can do it with this. If not, I will see if I can just get a 45 degree nipple or an adapter to go from the O-ring to the flare. So I'm getting ready to stick that in and see if it fits. I got it! Yay! Um... I ended up using a 90 on it and then going forward. So I'm going to fire up the tractor real quick and try it out. And see if there's any leaks, which I doubt there will be. Better not be. I guess is what I should show you is where the line is on the back of the tractor. It was a little difficult to reach, but not bad. But it's up here on top of the transmission. I can actually reach that. I took it out, tried out the differential lock. So this is locked from here to here. Then I unlocked it right there. So you can see the, the tread difference. So it goes from really digging, from having to skid around the curve. I unlock it right there and they turn real easy. So it's working. Okay. Well, it will go. Those are all finger tight. That one's not quite, but just barely rubbing. I mean, obviously it will go, so there it goes. Even though it's not a red door. And there is the hatch put back in place. I don't think that looks too bad, does it? Compared to the rest of the floor, who cares, right? I mean, that's that's good enough. I'm, I'm okay with that. And since I had it here in the shop, I worked on a few other things. I replaced the hoses for the grapple fork because the old hoses were terrible. Um, the rubber completely falling off the outside layer on one of them. 
So I did that. Uh, let's see, gave the loader good greasing again. Greased all the steering components. Uh, let's see what else did I Oh, yeah. Um, I moved this mirror out. It was clear up against this post. So I moved it out a few inches so I could actually see out of it. And then also I moved these lights up because they were right here. You want the lights as low as possible when you're using a plow, so it'll cut through the dirt. Kind of like, you know, fog lights on a car are low as possible, that way it cuts through the fog better. Doesn't give you glare. But with a loader, you want them up as high as possible, that way you can see what you're doing. So I moved them way up there. I just put the wires out here for now. I'm going to see if in the future I can run them through that cab post. Uh, I will show you why I didn't do anything with that for right now, because... My roof is completely rusted out. Um, so I'm going to put on a new roof because I don't think I can pull that off and get it off there in one piece. But I don't have the time to do it right now. So in the future, I will pull this roof off, make a new roof, and uh, see if I can get these wires here run down through this post somehow. Then I also adjusted the parking brake so it'll actually work because it didn't even come close to working. I also worked on the neutral safety switch because in the past you had to put it over here and forth and push forward just slightly to get it to start the tractor. And now the key actually works in neutral, so that's awesome. Uh, let's see, what else did I do real quick while I was in here? Um, oh, I adjusted the three-point arms. When it was down in the past, they were literally like on the ground. It was terrible. Um, yeah, the safety neutral switch is back in there. That was kind of fun to get to. I think that's all that I did to it. Otherwise, you're excited about this, aren't you? So it's been a couple days. And uh, I pressure washed this transmission after I got it out of the shop again. And at this point, I can't see any oil on it. So, I think it was all that line. I'm just tickled pink with that. I mean, there is just, there's no wet spot, no shiny spot. I think that was it. I'm still in shock that little oil line was leaking that much oil. Especially considering it shouldn't even have pressure on it when the, the differential lock is not engaged. And then in conclusion, I'd like to say there's several things that I'm going to be doing to this tractor. i got to do some work to the loader and to the front axle and a bunch of other just little things here and there. So as I do this stuff, I'll keep making videos about it. So if you want to see what I do to this, then be sure to subscribe. Alright, thanks for watching y'all. We'll see you later.